in the fourth game, I was playing against an almost 2300 rated woman international master from Poland. I played e4 against her prize, she played c5, and I prepared this opening from chess mood. I saw it from her previous games that she also struggles with time trouble. So I was happy about that because at least it won't be only me. <laughs> Plus, I have the little advantage because I prepared and she probably didn't prepare against knight c3. How could she? I have never played it before in an OTB game, so yeah, knight c3 it is. This is the close Sicilian. Some people say this doesn't work. Yeah, but just because, you know, they don't play it on Grandmaster level doesn't mean that it is a bad opening. I mean, us mortals, any, anything can happen, right? Plus, it's an interesting opening, I must say. She played a6. I was prepared against this because I knew she played a6. Here, the theory goes with g3, um, developing the bishop on this side since it cannot develop on this side very well. Uh, she played b5, trying to advance here fast. Bishop g2 makes sense. Once you play g3, try to follow up with bishop g2 as soon as you can. She played bishop b7. I played d3. This is still theory. This is again from chess mood. She played e6. Everything was expected so far because I knew she played that, but she spent 20 minutes on this. I knew I had to play knight h3. The idea is, well, don't put your knight on the side of the board. Yes, of course not. But this knight is going to f4. She played knight c6. I think d5 is the move here that most people play or knight f6. Knight c6 is also doable. I castled, she played knight d4. I was, I was out of theory at this point. I played f4. Idea is to start attacking the, the king. She played to bishop e7, makes sense, right? And here the computer is telling me I should have played g4. I mean, it might look like we are weakening our position, but keep in mind, black didn't castle yet. If the knight gets out, I will push g5 also, and cannot castle long either, because also there are some pawns. That were pushed before. I played bishop e3 instead, which still makes sense. Uh, developing the the bishop. She played b4, and I played knight b1. I wanted to go to d2 and then c4. I didn't want to go to e2 because I didn't want to exchange this knight, but maybe I should have actually. Computer says knight a4 would have been the right move. Just harassing the c5 pawn as well and play b3, knight b2, knight c4, and come back that way. My opponent played queen b6. I played knight d2. Knight d2 makes sense. c3 makes sense, just kicking out this horsey. Here, I didn't want to play c3 yet, because uh, I was worried maybe something like this would happen, but computer says this is not doable, because queen takes. Yes, and now queen b3. All right, suddenly this queen is trapped. So I played knight d2, uh, threatening knight c4. Here I also started thinking, and keep in mind, my opponent, my opponent's one hour suddenly disappeared. She only has she only has 15 minutes at this point, and we are only at move 11. So she played knight f6. I played c3, trying to kick the knight. She went back to c6, and I played knight c4, normal move, right, attacking the queen. Asking her to leave, she went back to c7. I was thinking about e5, pushing e5. I also looked at f5, but in the end I decided with e5. Obviously, computer now says f5 would have been better, but I played e5. She went to d5. Of course, I don't want to capture this even if I ruin her pawn structure, because that's an important bishop, right? I mean, I don't want to get rid of that yet played bishop d2. I just didn't want to defend it with an extra piece. I didn't want to give it away either because then I would just lose tempo. Maybe I will need this bishop, we will see. And it's still questionable where this king goes, right? She played knight b6, trying to kick my knight out. And here I thought about this move, but in the end I did not um, play it. I'm a bit disappointed. I thought about giving this check and sacrificing a, a pawn. Bishop takes. Now, pawn takes, queen takes. I have the bishop pair, so now obviously it makes sense to open the position and play f5 and sacrificing this pawn over there. Queen takes. And uh, now it's interesting. It's interesting. This queen, it feels lost. The king is still nervous where he should go. 
I should have played knight f2 here, which is maybe not an easy move to find. This is also hanging, but now we play knight d4. We sacrifice three pawns for this position and the queen feels lost. We have knight d6 potentially. So, I mean, for sure we have something unless opponent plays this, but then we have knight f6, discovered attack. And if uh, queen goes here, now there is bishop f4 and still going to d6 and win the win a piece. So we should be happy here, but obviously it's very, very hard to see all these uh, in a game, right? I played knight e3, which was a miss. Mm, my idea was to support f5, maybe play knight g4, we will see. She played g6, not allowing me to play f5. I played rook c1 here. You know, just, um, it's, it's a good thing having our major piece on the same file as the opponent's uh, queen is, right? threatening pawn takes b4 we take and maybe we will be able to win something because of the pin because keep in mind these three pawns can easily disappear any time so she played a5 just protecting this pawn even further i played d4 she can't really take because i will recapture and now there is a pin here and maybe i will play d5 next she captured first and here i was thinking a bit how i should recapture bishop should take or pawn should take uh, i thought bishop might make sense because if i push d5 then maybe this diagonal opens up plus we keep the c file more open this way but in the end i thought taking with the pawn is probably more solid because at least i have a beautiful pawn chain this bishop is bad anyway so there is nothing to do about it. She should have taken, but again, now I have this pin. It's a bit risky, right? Because d5, there is d5 soon. So why black will need to respond to these threats here. She played c4 instead. And I was happy with this because uh, even though my rook, rook looks dumb a bit, she also limits herself. d5 remains an option. And here again, I was thinking about a crazy idea. I don't know, I felt like sacrificing in this uh, in this tournament because I thought about pushing f5, which is a logical move, right? If e takes, these pawns are strong. I have g4 even. And if g pawn takes, I thought I would play queen h5 and now maybe play g4. I didn't want to play g4 immediately here because there might be rook g8. And keep in mind, now my king is also becoming a bit dubious here. I played rook b1 instead, which also makes sense in my eyes because we are threatening these pieces here. She played rook b8 and I don't know why. Again, f5, f5, why not play f5? Let's play f5. Again, now it works for the same reason. So I won't show it again. I thought I have the time. So I played knight f f2, which is still a normal move. My idea was to bring it to e4, maybe play knight g4, knight f6, you know, these these dark squares are looking fancy she played f5 and at this point i was like okay this must be dubious she of course wanted to close the position right because since i am attacking she wants to close the doors when you are attacking you want to open the doors so i captured i said no door closing on me here bishop takes f6 and uh 94 makes sense right attacking this bishop i thought if she moves the bishop away I thought I would capture here. I saw this in the game. Queen takes, and I thought I would capture on c4. Queen moves away, and now I put a fat cow on d6. And we wish good luck to this king. And what does she do? She castles. She castles here. I was like, okay, this must not be correct here. I very often have f5 ideas. Knight takes this bishop, other knight comes. I just have too many attackers on the king. And what are these guys doing here on the queen side? Now it doesn't work, because now what do you achieve? You don't achieve anything. You put a knight on d6, you can even capture this. Queen, uh, queen c7, you put a knight in here, but to do what? Computer says f5 is the best, obviously. Just go and smash that way. Taking makes sense. Here rook takes f6. And I thought queen g4 looks like a normal looking move. Why not play it even then after that I will be threatening maybe f5. I thought about knight g4 too, but I decided let's bring the strongest piece into the attack. And computer says, screw you. 
yeah, you're gonna have five is still interesting because if g pawn takes, now we can bring this queen over here. We also have d5 eventually and just crushing the pawn structure. And if the e pawn takes, now there is rook takes b6, queen takes, boom, knight d5, and uh, black will have to respond to some sins. She played knight e7, which makes sense bringing an extra attacker here, not allowing me to play f5 ever. I played bishop takes b7. Why did I play bishop b7? Queen g5 and everything is fine. Just kicking this rook out. Let's say if it moves back, now you take, now you take, and the difference is, you could say it's the same, but with different move order, but it's not the same because now black wasted the move on, on going back instead of knight d5. So now I take, rook takes, and now knight g4. And now I thought taking is a good idea, which computer again says it was not. <laughs> I wanted to capture there because, well, of course, if queen takes, then there is a lovely pin there. And if rook takes, then at least she can bring that over there. Also, why would she? I thought my bishop wouldn't be doing such a great job anymore. Now I played queen g5. But again, now that's a problem because black brings an extra defender. Here I was like, oh, damn. Damn it. It's going, how, how will I continue? Now I didn't see anything because... I don't have attacker pieces. I mean, I have the queen here, but what am I going to do? H4, H5 doesn't work now because what do I achieve? And black survives. Black survives. And again, F5. Computer says F5. But now it's a drawish position. Of course, 0, 0, 0, as expected from the computer. The most drawish position you will see today, obviously. I played knight g4, thinking that, okay, still fine, maybe. Still fine. She played rook f8. Knight h6, check. Just trying to bring more pieces to the attack again. Maybe hoping for an f5 one day. One day she played king g7. Obvious move. I don't know why it got an exclamation mark. It's obvious. I captured the rook. Queen takes. I didn't want her to double up on the b file and then cause some issues there. So that's why I captured. Although she can still come in with the queen. So. Anyways, now I caught up actually in time. I also forgot in the meantime. She was, I had one hour extra time. I seriously lost that advantage slowly, slowly. Conclusion, guys, don't think. Anyways, I played g4. g4, trying to force this f5 idea still. She played knight f6. I played f5. I was happy. Finally, f5 happened. We are all good. f5, queen d5. Well, since I was low on time, I had to play faster. Computer again says h4, maybe h5 ideas and weakening this pawn further. Anyways, bishop f4 is what happened. Still a normal move. Wanted to go to e5, just pinning this knight over there, causing some troubles or at least trying to. She played knight c6, not allowing me to do that. Here, I played queen h4. I didn't want to exchange queens, but I really wanted to capture one of these pawns. And queen h4 is a good move. She captured the d4. We were low on time. We have one minute, both of us. We are at move 34. I captured. I was like, okay, nothing else works. I have to take here. She captured. Well, I played king h1 first. She gave queen e2. I said, okay, let's repeat a couple of moves just to get closer to the end. You know, I mean, I mean, not the end, but like, you know, the 40th move. So we get the uh, extra 30 minutes. She played knight d5. I uh, played bishop g5. Makes a lot of sense. And again, suddenly I'm again winning. I mean, my king looks a bit exposed, but it's actually fine. I'm also threatening with some ideas here. I think one idea is probably f6, f7, and then bishop f6. Or bishop e7, and then f6, f7, f8. Yeah, he takes f5, she captured. And, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention now how to mess up a completely winning position. Obvious move here. Knight takes f5 is the move. Knight takes f5, pawn takes, bishop h6, check. King goes away. If the king goes there, then queen g5, check. And uh, there are some problems here, right? Uh, I can even take everything is winning here. Everything is just so winning here. If she goes there, I just say thanks for the material. 
and there is no perpetual, my king is well defended, and um, if we count the material suddenly, there is an extra rook. I, I consider knight takes f5, but I had a, I had a brain fart, like I, I thought I would take, take, and what did I calculate? I said, okay, queen h6 doesn't work, so I shouldn't take on f5. Okay, I was low on time, but still, bishop f, bishop h6, and gg. No, what does Fruji do? Let's stick with the pawn. Because I kind of forgot that if queen takes, bishop takes, the knight won't be defended anymore. You have no idea how much I was raging after the game. I saw it immediately. Of course, she captures. I capture, I would have captured too. It takes the, the knight and here it's resignable. It's a minus five. Of course, I didn't resign because, because she was still, no, actually she was not low on time because we reached the extra 30 minutes. So now that's not even an extra hope, you know, that ah, maybe in low time she will blunder something. No, absolutely not. Anyways, I was raging here. I, I said, okay, F6, whatever. Let's just keep fighting. She plays C3. I played Bishop E1. <laughs> what to do here? She plays Rook C8. I said, okay, well, maybe, maybe, very maybe, let's play for some sort of mate ideas. I knew they wouldn't work, but you know, I was just trying to hold on to that one last final hope. She plays g5, I said, okay, f7, let's go. Here I wanted her to play king g7 because then I would promote until now I saw rook takes. And now bishop takes c3, of course, knight takes. Uh, rook takes, and I'm still two pawns down. But you know, rook and game. Anything can happen. But of course, what does she do? She doesn't do king g7. She plays c2, king g7, uh, king f2, knight f4, bishop c1, and two, takes my pawn, h4, h6, obvious moves, takes, h takes, and here I said, okay, thanks. Thanks for the game. I was so mad. I was so mad at myself. You don't want to see what's going on in my head when I lose like this. <laughs> Actually, there are two stories in my career right now, or well, at least previously. One is crushing position, and then time trouble comes, and I blunder something very elementary. <laughs> or the second option is the, way, the other way I lose, is that I don't know openings, and out of the opening, I get into a suspicious position and I don't manage to win it and I lose early because I got into a terrible position after the opening.